this is a nice packed crowd. Welcome to the White House. Yeah, come on. Let's get excited about it. We're in the White House. Loving it. What'd you say, babe? <laughs> It's exciting, it's okay to be excited. Hi, sweetie. I love you all, and I'm glad you are in this house. It's gonna be great fun, um, but I am thrilled to welcome you all here to our in performance at the White House workshop as we celebrate the life and achievements of a legendary American musician, Mr. Ray Charles. <laughs> Today's event is a little bittersweet for all of us because today marks the very last in performance event that will take place while my family is living in the White House. We, we're going to have a lot of lasts coming up and this is the last of one of my favorite events of all time. And these events have been such a wonderful part of our time here, in particular these workshops and being with all of you. Uh, since our first concert in 2009, we have hosted 11 of these workshops. We started out celebrating the music of the Civil Rights Movement with the late, great Natalie Cole. She was here for that, and we are so blessed that we have her here. We went on to celebrate everything from Motown with Smokey Robinson to country with Chris Christopherson. Uh, to Memphis Soul with Justin Timberlake. Yes, he was here and he spent time with young people. So we have had such a tremendous set of artists and uh, focuses on, 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 on music. The best of all, we've been able to share this amazing cultural legacy with over 800 young people from around the country. <laughs> So our, our thinking by bringing you all here is that we have this wonderful action-packed celebration that's filmed and it's shown on television, but we want to make sure that the kids in our country get to really experience these artists. So in exchange for what they're doing at night, they're here all day, they, they give up their time to come and really spend some quality time with you guys. And that's really what makes um, uh, these performances so unique. And Today I want to take a moment to recognize Bob Santelli uh, from the Grammy Museum. <laughs> because he has been here for every single one of these events and none of these workshops would happen uh, without Bob's passion and focus for bringing the arts to our young people. He's been a champion of this cause. He's been an outstanding partner over these years. Um, never failing, always enthusiastic here, just making sure we get the right artists and these conversations are lively and engaged. And Bob, I just wanna take a moment to thank you thank truly you. for your friendship and your support and for all that you do. And as we said backstage, we hope that the next administration will continue this tradition because it is a wonderful way uh, to, to just reinforce our, our rich cultural heritage in the arts here at the White House. So thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> so we figured we gotta go out with a bang, right? So to help us honor uh, Mr. Charles's legacy, we've invited a group of wonderful artists to share their gifts with all of us. We have Yolanda Adams. <laughs> Leon Bridges. <laughs> Leon's a little shy. He said, I haven't been much off my porch lately. <laughs> He's been everywhere now. Uh, we have Andra Day. <laughs> Demi Lovato. <laughs> And last but not least, Jesse Smollett. <laughs> you, you don't want to miss out on this cuteness over here. So I, I'm, I'm sorry for those for, for blocking it. He'll, I'll be gone in a second. <laughs> but finally, I want to give a special shout out to all of you, all of our amazing young people who come here from all across the country. 
I understand we have young people from California. <laughs> we got some Ohio young people in the house. Come on, Ohio. You can whoop it up a little more. It's okay, it's okay. We got folks from Mississippi. We got a little Georgia in the house. And of course, we've got young people from right around the corner in Maryland who are here. Yay! Are you guys excited? Yeah. yeah. Well, me too. I'm really excited. We're celebrating an icon of American music, someone who's a longtime favorite in the Obama household and all across the country and, frankly, around the world. Uh, for over half a century, countless people have been grooving to Ray Charles's signature sound, that incredible blend of soul and gospel and everything in between. Uh, now, Bob's going to tell you more about Ray Charles in a few minutes, so I'm not going to steal his thunder. But I do want to talk a little bit about where uh, Mr. Charles and the folks on this stage started out, where they ended up, and uh, the journey they took the, to get here. See, Ray Charles may have ended up as a cultural icon, a man who won 17 Grammy Awards, who performed for seven presidents, and who was nicknamed the genius. But before all that, he was just a kid from a struggling family in rural Florida, where he was blind by the age of seven, and he was an orphan by the age of 15. But Ray Charles loved music and he was determined to pursue his passion. So he learned to read sheet music in Braille. He started arranging music for his high school band. Uh, he became a backup musician in a series of bands. And when he got his big break, uh, he toured for nine or 10 months every single year. He was always on the road, spending long days and long nights performing as much as he could. Because as Ray Charles put it, and these are his words, he said, if there's something I want to do, I won't be satisfied until I get it done. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake about it, that story of dedication and hard work, even in the face of all kinds of obstacles, that's the story of every single person on this stage. And it's one of the reasons why we wanted to have them here, one of the reasons why they wanted to share their stories with you, because they've seen that struggle. For example, Andra, has been called a, a newcomer to soul music. But the truth is that she's been rehearsing and performing since she was 11 years old. So just think about it. This newcomer has been working on this craft since she was a baby. Yolanda Adams, her father passed away when she was young, so she had to help raise uh, her five brothers and sisters with her mother. Uh, but she kept on singing in the church and choir on the weekends, and then she used her free time whatever little she had to record and travel to gigs. And today she's one of the biggest names in gospel. She's one of the phenomenal voices of our time. And she is a dear, dear friend in addition to hosting radio and doing all kinds of other things. And then there's Leon, young Leon Bridges over there looking pretty sharp. <laughs> trying to, trying to. As a kid, Leon was so shy, he's still a little shy, he couldn't have dreamed of singing in front of other people at all. Just two years ago, he was working as a dishwasher and playing to crowds of just 10 people, sometimes while still wearing his dishwashing apron. <laughs> but he kept on rehearsing and practicing and taking advanced dance classes. He's a dancer and practicing his guitar, and soon folks started to realize that Leon had some talent. Started getting bigger crowds, and the record labels took notice. And eventually, as you may have seen last week, uh, Leon made it to the Grammys, where his very first album was nominated for Best R&B Album of the Year. <laughs> and may I ask, how old are you? 26. <laughs> now, to you all, that may sound old, but to me, he's a baby. <laughs> See, we got to flip it now. we got teenagers now. So the folks on this stage have, have placed, faced plenty of challenges. Demi Lovato, as you all know her story, overcame addiction and mental health issues and is now an activist empowering others. And she has really used her voice in a very powerful way, something that artists don't often do, but she's taken that risk. 
Uh, Jesse spoke out about the civil rights issues he cares about, even when TV executives told him that that would harm his career. He did not let that stop him. He is a role model, a representative, and a voice for so many young people. No matter what, these folks kept on going. They kept on practicing and studying and believing in themselves. When they made a mistake or ex experienced a fail failure, they just didn't say, well, that's it, I'm giving up. They just picked themselves up and got right back to work. And that's really one of the reasons why we invited you all here today, because we wanted you all to understand that no matter who you are or what challenges you face, you all have the power to get from those seats down there to these seats up here or anywhere else you want to go in the world. But it's going to take some, some real effort on your part. Nothing comes easy. It may look easy when you see it from the outside, but everyone who is a star, who gains fame, they've had to really work and invest. So you all need to start early. And that, and that means starting with your education, having that education as your foundation. Because whether you want to be a musician or a teacher or a doctor or anything else that you feel passionately about, you're going to need a good education. And I can't say that enough. I talk about it all over the country. This is the best investment you could be making for yourselves right now is being in school and being focused. And that doesn't mean just showing up. That's not enough. It means really putting your effort into school, paying attention in class. It means taking good notes. It means listening to your teachers and your parents. It means putting real effort into your homework. You know, doing your math problems over and over again, rewriting that essay again and again and again until it's the very best that you can be. You start practicing that behavior now so that when you get on this stage or whatever stage is going to be yours, you're ready for the challenge. And if something doesn't work for the first time, if you fail, fail a test, get a bad grade on a, anything, it's okay to feel sad, it's okay to be disappointed, but here's the thing, you've got to figure out uh, where you fell short, and then you've got to get right back up and out there and try even harder. I mean, I can't say that enough. Failure is a key part of success. It is the, it, it, you don't get here unless you failed real bad, real big, and real hard <laughs> somewhere. And that includes my husband, the President of the United States. The question is, uh, how do you get back up from those failures? How resilient are you? Because as Ray Charles said, if there's truly something you want to do in the world, you can't be satisfied until you do it. And today is your chance to learn from him, as well as all these extraordinary folks on stage. Um, so I want you to take advantage of being in the White House today. And I want you guys to relax and feel at home and ask questions, because everybody is here for you. Truly, the only reason we are doing this is because we love you deeply, we care about you, and we know you're the future. So this is your house right now, okay? So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to turn it over to Bob and our esteemed artist. And you guys have fun, raise your hands, and say goodbye to the cameras because, you know, they're not going to be here for too long. <laughs> All right? You guys have a lot of fun, and thank you. We love you. Work hard, okay? All right. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow, right? <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. But as the First Lady was saying about Ray Charles, the story of Ray Charles is a uniquely American one. It's something that all of us know, not necessarily from Ray Charles in particular, but sometimes from artists like this, perhaps people in your neighborhood who have gone and done something extraordinary despite handicaps or despite challenges. The most important thing about Ray Charles is that he lived the American dream. He created for himself an American dream. And what does that mean exactly? And what did he give us in return? Well, as the First Lady said, Ray Charles was born into poverty in Florida. By the time he was seven or eight, he had gone blind. And back in those days, as we had discussed last or yesterday, this was a pretty big handicap to have. But what Ray Charles does, musically speaking, 
becomes an inspiration, not just for my guests up here on stage, but for so many American singers, performers, that the list is almost endless. If I were to ask some of the greatest artists today, starting with Beyonce or Justin Timberlake, you can almost rest assured that on their list of major influences would be Ray Charles. It would have to be. Why is that? Aside from his personal story, the music that he has given us and the boundaries that he has broken over the course of his long career is astonishing. We had talked yesterday in our classroom discussions. We said that there are so many different American music forms, from the sacred side of gospel, all the way over to the secular side of blues and everything in between, whether it's rock and roll or soul or rhythm and blues or country music. And many artists that come through the American music tradition are often categorized into one of those. You're a pop singer, you're a blues singer, you're a gospel singer, except when it came to Ray Charles. Because when Ray Charles stepped up to his piano or up to a microphone, he became America, just simply America, because he embraced every single one of those music forms. He wasn't just one. In, in fact, there are a lot of music historians who say that he invented a couple of them as well. He didn't like to think that because he saw music the way it truly is, which is really an evolution. No music form is invented or born just like that. It happens over the course of time. It takes lots of artists to contribute. But sometimes it's a lot easier to say this particular artist or this particular song that's when it happened. And for Ray Charles, of course, as you know from yesterday, what I'd say in 1958, 1959, that song comes out and everyone says, it's a new kind of music. Ray Charles created it called soul music. Well, I don't know whether he created it, but I can tell you this, he certainly brought it to the forefront. And that song and Ray Charles stepping out gave rise to a whole new music form in America in the 1960s we called soul music. But if you were to ask Ray if he were here today, he'd say, you know what? All I did with soul music was what every other African-American artist was doing, either in church or in the nightclubs, which was sing with my heart, sing with emotional intensity, capture the essence of what my message is. And that is the great soul music. That is the great American vocal tradition. But put that aside for a second. Talk about country music. As we said yesterday, lots of people always thought, particularly in the years before World War II, that the only people who listened to country music were white people because a vast majority of the musicians and artists were white. But if you were to ask Ray Charles what one of his favorite music forms were, he'd say country music. And to prove it, he creates a record in the early 1960s that many people said, it's going to ruin your career, no one would buy it, Black people don't sing country music, and he proved them all wrong. And that record, when that came out, and the, the succeeding records that he did, and the popularity that he brought, opened up this concept that there are no racial boundaries, or economic boundaries, or ge geographic boundaries when it comes to American music. We embrace it all, and anyone can sing any of these forms, no matter who you are or where you come from. That's one of the gifts that Ray Charles gave us. But he gave us rock and roll too because he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and he sang with a rock and roll intensity when he wanted to. He certainly could sing gospel music. He certainly sang country as we just said. He was known as an R&B artist, but there are a lot of people which also would put him in the jazz category because he could do that as well. Wow, what an artist. And then when it comes time to summarize the American experience. We all know the song, America the Beautiful. We all learned it in school, you guys all know this song. A lot of artists have sung that song. But we know from yesterday, from our class, that when Ray Charles sang that song, all of a sudden that song, forget country blues, gospel soul, forget all of that, and just focus in on the beauty of that song and the performance that Ray Charles gave us. One of the greatest vocal performances of that song or any patriotic song in the history of our country. 
America the Beautiful. And what Ray gave us there was the idea that a person with God-given talent who then took it and gave it to us as a gift, a communal gift to not just America, but really the entire world, could sing a song about America and sing it with such meaning and, and intensity that it allowed it to be the ultimate gift to the country he loved so much. So here at the White House, celebrating Ray Charles and celebrating the gifts that he's given to us as fans, but also to the country and also to these artists here, it's a powerful thing. It's not random that we end this series with Ray Charles. As the First Lady said, we've been here 11 times, 12 times, and each time we celebrated the American Music Forum. We end with that artist who represented all of those, civil rights on down. What a man, what an artist, what a catalog of music, and what a source of inspiration he's given all of us. Now, I could go on and on and on talking about Ray Charles because he's one of my personal heroes as well, and we work very closely with the Ray F Charles Foundation. I know Valerie Irvin is here somewhere, and she has been my partner in celebrating Ray's legacy for a long time, but this is, uh, this is something that is personal and professionally very, very important to me, and I know it's important to my artist as well. I can't let you go and break into the groups that we're going to do in just a second without ending at least in music because talk is cheap but music is special and I think Leon Bridges has a special segue song to give us before we roll up our sleeves and, uh, and get into today's lessons. Leon, what do you have for us? How y'all doing? <laughs> I'm gonna sing you a song of mine that was inspired by Ray Charles. It's not finished yet, but hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. Ain't got no riches. Ain't got no money that runs along but I have a love that's tall. Honey, I'm late to all of my functions but I'll be by the telephone. Whenever you call, baby, my breath ain't hard crossing my door, so wide open. Ain't got no short mind. No fancy education, but I know everything about you. You may not be everywhere I go, but you stay on my mind. Wherever I go, ain't got no riches, ain't got no money that runs along, but I have a love that's tall. Mm. Thank you. All right. So let's call up, one, let's have Jesse's group. Who's speaking from Jesse's group? Come on up, tell us who you are. All right, there's your microphone. Hello, my name is 
Devin Woodfine, and I represent the black group, and we were able to talk to Mr. Jesse. And basically what he was telling is, no matter what you do, you should always remain humble, and you should never get complacent in where you're at now. You should always continue to strive more and try to better yourself and improve. And that's what we learn in the Jesse group. All right. Come through. <laughs> All right. Who is speaking from Demi Lovato's group? Come on up. Yay. Well, this is a, all right, here we go. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm from. Hello, my name is Adonis Warren and I attend George Washington Preparatory High School. I am from Los Angeles, California and I am here with the Brotherhood of Crusade. First and foremost, I wanna say we spoke to an amazing, incredible, the most dynamic woman I have ever met, Mrs. Demi Lovato. <laughs> Speaking to her was uh, very emotional, for me at least. Um, it was like the best 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> <And> <laughs> she's so great, y'all. <laughs> so Demi Lovato grew up in Texas where, uh, oh sorry, Demi Lovato grew up in Texas is what started her career, what started her career was her entering a talent show when she was in kindergarten. She was inspired by country music and soulful sounds. Her greatest influence was Aretha Franklin. Mine too, girl. <laughs> too. We have a lot in common. Right. Look up. <laughs> let me, okay, let me finish, Demi. <laughs> okay. Um, she got where she was by doing two important things, which is making sacrifices and dedication. And one thing that stood out um, the most was her words of encouragement, which is where, excuse me. Oh, if you work hard, you will achieve, which mm -hmm. is something that everybody should go by. So thank you, Demi, and all the other artists. You guys are so great. <laughs> okay, how about someone from Andrew's group? Um, hello, my name is Jared Andrews from the Otis Reading Foundation, and we spoke with Andrea Day. And my name is Clevis Michael Edmond Jr. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I attend George Washington Preparatory High School. All right. We spoke to an inspirational, remarkable, beautiful young woman, Ms. Andrea Day. And it was amazing. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing to see how she was so humble, soft spoken, with no ego, and even admitted her own struggles with her music. One thing she mentioned to us today was that Ray Charles was a big inspiration in her life because she had to look at some of the many challenges that she went through and that she could relate to him. And one thing I asked her about was, what was her motivation in writing her songs? Because I'm a songwriter myself, and she told me that when you're, when you're writing songs, that to just tell your story, and to, um, and, she also <laughs> and she also said to us that uh, Ray Charles was such a seminal, like, and so, like, he, was, he, he didn't really, he didn't really think that he was the king of soul. He just thought that he was, you know, an inspiration to others. And so I'm glad that we were able to speak to her today. I'm, I'm thankful that she was able to give us, the, give, her her, a, give her her time up just to come talk to us. And thank you. All right. Good job, guys. How about someone from Yolanda's group? Okay, come on up. We got a small village coming up here. Um, we all uh, spoke with uh, Miss Yolanda Adams, who was actually like one of the coolest individuals I've had the pleasure of meeting in my life. And um, 
she told us a lot about how she had a lot of high and lows in her life, just like Mr. Ray Charles did. And she's really like inspired me, like just to never give up and always go through, you know, life one step at a time and to just keep moving forward because it could help you achieve very great things in life. Hello, everybody. My name is Corey Crenshaw. I'm a senior at George Washington Preparatory High School located in South Los Angeles, California. I'm, on, I'm here on the behalf of Brotherhood Crusade. And Ms. Adams, you are an outstanding woman. You remind me so much of my grandmother. I really appreciate your time here. You did a wonderful job. Um, the best thing that I heard in the best 10 years was she just said to me, because I'm only 17, but the best thing she said was, when you don't have the answer and you kind of confused and nobody doesn't have the answer for you, just simply ask God. And that was so powerful. And I really appreciate her time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alexis Godinez from Stockton, Fremont Elementary School. And I met Mrs. Adams for the first time. I really never heard her, ever. <laughs> well, yeah. One of the questions I mostly asked her was how, what kind of music did she hear and what, how did it affect her surroundings? And she told me that she grew up in a house that everything was mostly about music because of her mom. And she could have chosen music but one of her passions was education, so she could have chosen that too. And with music and education weren't like compatible, so she had to pick one of the two. And well, she picked um, music. She was a teacher for seven years too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and last but not least, how about someone from Leon's group? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Enid Mitchell. I'm part of Brotherhood Crusade, and we're located in South Los Angeles, and we have Leon Bridges. And I'm honored to Leon Bridges is a shy person, but he's very motivated. And he told me how he overcome his fear is that um, open mic, what I'm doing right now, but I'm not shy. <laughs> how do you say that? And he expresses feelings through music. Like he, his audience is mostly, he told me it was white. And I asked him a question, how can he um, express his feelings towards us black people in South Los Angeles? Because I don't really listen to that music. I listen to mostly rap and I wanted to, I wanted to feel his vibe as a person with his music because I, I just started listening to other styles of music because I didn't know the meaning of it, just like gospel. Mm -hmm. I just started listening to gospel music and it really is motivating. It helps people understand God and, and I'm happy to be here today. Oh. Well done, man. Well done. Wow. That was great, guys. You did a heck of a fine job, all of you, okay? All of you, wonderful, and thank you to my friends up here. This was terrific. I hope you had as good a time as they did. We're a little bit over, so I'm going to just kind of cut to the chase. You can never end something like this, especially the last one, without some music. So I'm going to ask Ms. Andrea Day to kind of take over, maybe. you take us home. Hi, thank you guys again to all the groups, to my purple groups. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm actually, I'm going to sing Rise Up and really my prayer is that, thank you. <laughs> um, and always my prayer is that this song is, uh, is encouraging and, and healing and inspirational as music should be and is meant to be. So I hope you enjoy this. I 
You're broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round. And you can't find a fighter. But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out. Move, mountain. We gon' walk it out. Move, mountain. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day. I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid. I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. I will rise. Silence isn't quiet, and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe. And I know you feel like dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet and move out and bring it to its feet. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you guys so much. I'm sure everyone is going to take what you've given them today and remember it for the rest of their lives. I know I will. Thank you again. One more time. <laughs> Justin Smollett, Demi Lovato, Andrew Day, Leon Bridges, and Yolanda Adams. <laughs> <laughs>